is higher by nearly 8.5% after reporting a strong set of earnings, a 60% jump in the profitability. Ramdev Agarwal, the joint MD of Motilal Oswal Financial Services, joins in now. Um, good afternoon uh, and thanks so much for joining in and congratulations before anything else. In the press conference right now, you were just indicating that the dependence on the brokerage segment will come down. How much does it contribute right now and how much do you expect it to contribute in the coming, um, say, few quarters or one year? Yeah, so <clears throat> earlier it used to be about, uh, uh, in fact, the whole initiative started with almost 95% uh, of the revenue and profits of more than 100% used to be coming from broking. Uh, then we started the initiative of diversifying into uh, fee-based businesses. And uh, now this quarter has been almost 50, now the broking has been about 50%. 20% is coming from... Uh, uh, asset management fees mm. and 20% is coming from housing finance uh, this thing so there's a complete rejig of uh, how the company looks in last 12 months okay and going ahead yeah so now I think this trend will continue and uh, broking will definitely I mean of course broking will grow like this quarter it has uh, this uh, this quarter year on year it has grown at 11 percent but rest of the pack has grown at uh, 100 percent 200 percent so we will become much much uh, more smaller probably it will become one third and two thirds i mean like uh, brooking will become one third in next two years time and uh, rest all pack will become two third uh, very quickly in next two years all right mr ramde thanks a lot for joining in first up your funds business has uh, really outperformed the uh, top line growth seen of close around 60 percent sequentially at the same time your finance costs have also increased about 62 percent quarter on quarter so could you give us a sense of what's the kind of capital that you've raised during the quarter in your funds bi uh, funds business and also what's your dispersal rate been yeah so uh, there are two buckets of uh, I mean, questions and uh, answers one is about the asset management business. So asset management business uh, has seen a growth of about on year on year almost like a, it might be 3x or 4x because uh, now we manage about upwards of 9,000 crores purely in equities. Last year at this point of time, it must have been about 2,500 crores kind of thing. So clearly it is uh, more than 3, uh, 3x, 3.5x uh, 3 in this period. So that has led to increase in the uh, fee, fee income. and. Uh, uh, till about a quarter back, actually we were below break even in uh, asset hmm. management. So it's a it's a business where you have the uh, fixed cost of uh, uh, 50, 60 crores, and once the fixed cost crosses, mm -hmm. uh, then you get the uh, profitability. So this is the first quarter of uh, some kind of profit from the asset management business. Then you have uh, so this will keep scaling up if the uh, AUM keeps scaling up. Uh, second is the uh, housing finance company, which is. Uh, about uh, 15 months old now and uh, we have dispersed uh, more than 1000 crores so far and it's in a uh, affordable segment and uh, there I think we have given about 200, 250 crores kind of equity and balance 700 crores uh, has been borrowed from the various banks. So that particular borrowing in a console basis is looking as if we are borrowing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's one source of major borrowing and that has led to spike in the uh, interest cost. Okay. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, on the margin front, uh, out of the three segments, the key three operating segments, brokerage, fund-based, as well as asset management, uh, where do you see, in which segments will the margin improve, according to you, in the next one year? And any segments, say, perhaps in the brokerage business, where you expect margins to come down because of competitive pressures? Uh, no, as far as the brokerage is concerned, uh, uh, we have, uh, over a period, we have devised a model <coughs> where uh, margins are pretty stable uh, at about, uh, you know, 30% uh, kind of EBITDA margin and upwards of 20% net margin. So that, that, the problem with the brokerage is that we cannot grow very rapidly. So, uh, so now uh, we have uh, now successfully uh, launched this AMC, which has crossed the break-even. So as... Uh, as the, uh, you know, because uh, it takes time for it to break even, there are a lot of fixed costs. So right now, our net margin would be, say, 15%. But as the, as the uh, AUM doubles, the margin also goes, say, three times. So if I go from 10,000, 9,000 crores to 20,000 crores, my fee will double, but my profit will go at least four to five times. So I think margin expansion will be relentless in uh, uh, AMC business as well as in housing finance because both have startup costs, both have 
about 40 50 crores a startup cost which we have crossed over uh, and both of them have become uh, uh, profitable so i think next hmm. 3 4 years we'll see continuous increase in the margin from both the segments all right but uh, uh, stay on with us mr agarwal we'll also keep an keep an eye out on the markets the nifty is actually now in the red with the key drag coming in from various top line front line stocks like tata motors that one's fallen about 1.3% in the last 15 odd minutes tata steels also contributed to that fall bhel bajaj auto asian paints all those stocks in the red right now sbi has also slipped from the top down about 1% from the top so coming back to you mr agarwal is apart from your earnings uh, what is your sense on the earnings that we've seen so far what's your view are they up to up to the mark or do you think there is still room for improvement in the earnings that have come by so far see typically the early birds are you know uh, typically you see the good results they get announced uh, very quickly after the end of the quarter so i think you will we will not get a true trend till about end of the month and after that you'll get to see really the whole uh, you know lineup of uh the company is coming in so far i have not seen major disappointments uh, nor a major firework but uh, i think uh, deflation taking over the top line like uh, in hll result where we saw that uh, volume growth is 7% and yet the top line growth was just about 2 3% mm -hmm. i think that will be the defining feature in next 3 4 quarters of all the companies where uh, the inflation was leading to kind of a top line bump up and that's where the disappointment is going to come so for a lot of good companies the franchise will be safe but growth will be visible in a limited way so i think that's a first trend i see in the result in this quarter okay by the way keep your eye on wealth fund india as well so that's slipping it's down close to about 3 odd percent as mangalam was telling us the top line growth at 4 and a half percent looks subdued and the profit jump of 33 percent looks quite good but that's largely aided on account of lower finance costs uh, that's not lnd we were talking about wealth fund india which just came out with their earnings in the broader market um mr agarwal coming back to the point that you were making about how uh you know earnings the deflation worries will start showing up in the earnings and that could constitute a disappointment we saw that in the case of hul uh, which are the companies and therefore are these the stocks that you would avoid no th that is a much much deeper thing i mean then you have to look at the price and those kind of thing i'm just saying what i'm seeing in the earnings i mean uh, yeah because these are great companies at a particular price i mean these companies are worth investing but uh, uh the current prices I mean, uh, they may not be great investments. At I mean, if you want to earn eight, ten percent, they are very good. But if you want to earn twenty, twenty-five percent, probably they will they will not be able to do it because the earnings growth is not there to that extent. All right, we do understand that uh, you are a long-term investor, fundamental long only, if I may quote you. But could you give us a sense on the markets because yeah. we're seeing rapid falls close to that 8,300 level. At the higher levels, there seems to be some kind of concern or. tentativeness from people in in terms of getting into the market so what's your call in the market <laughs> very difficult i mean last year if if you had asked me in last diwali and you can run the tap clearly we would have said that uh, we'll do at least 15 20% from that level so clearly uh, at least we are completely wrong so again you know trying to figure out even for the shorter term is going to be very tough but my sense is from uh, 8000 the downside is limited i mean yes it can go down to 7500 7200 whatever at 10% but it will bounce back very quick quickly so it at around 8000 i mean the long, for the long term investor there is very little to lose and uh, some day this story is going to happen india story is going to happen world story is going to happen and uh, on a three year basis i'll be surprised uh, uh, that will not make a decent money and in any case the stocks are different from the markets so you are buying stocks not the markets Okay Mr. Agarwal always a pleasure to get in your view thanks so much for joining in keep your eye on BASF a big loss nearly 60 crore Thank versus you. a loss of 20 crore stock is under pressure let's slip into a very short break when we return trading strategies with Chris Subramanian